closer. <laughs> We're sitting on the floor again, and Mel just has curled into a ball of shame. Hello. I shouldn't be on a podcast. You really shouldn't. Hello. Hi. My name is Ezra. My name is Mel. And welcome to the Sincerely Queerly podcast. finally gonna do this podcast thing right and start off with our bits yeah our that sounds bits. weird i don't whoa <laughs> my bits. stop talking about your solidified bits no? <laughs> you're the one who brought it up i know but i don't like it how I'm did we get through a whole like episode it. calling them bits and not realize that was weird <laughs> i don't know okay anyway Hey Mel, we're gonna be professional here. What's our Jonas Brothers song? Professional. Oh yeah. Um, our Jonas Brothers song are, of the pod. Are you implying that there's something more professional than the Jonas Brothers? No, of course not. Cool. Good. Uh, my Jonas Brothers song of the pod is "Video Girl," another underground one that not a lot of people talk Indie. about. Indie. Fun fact: This was one of the only songs that Kevin wrote. Because Kevin doesn't do anything. Wait, which one's Kevin again? <laughs> you know which one Kevin is. So my reason for Video Girl is it has me thinking about VidCon and how everyone there is super attention thirsty. We went to VidCon. Yeah. Segway. VidCon sucked. Oh, that's it? But the friends were good. Yeah, oh. just, just oh, like... Oh, I thought, I thought you were going to, like, continue your analysis. I mean, that's basically it, like... Video Girl rocked my world for a whole two seconds. You know what rocked my world? This fact about birds. <laughs> You're not even going to let me go with the analysis, though. Oh, okay. I was, you I had was, analysis? You had more analysis? I was just going to keep talking. Okay, keep talking. Uh, no, I don't even know what I was going to say. Just, like, people who are, like, really, like, trying to, like, get in with the more popular YouTubers, and they say things that are kind of cringy to get their attention. Yeah. Like we're... screaming that Stevie Bobby's really attractive at a panel. Who? Also, I just want to say that if you're listening to this and you were with us at VidCon and you're like, whoa, I think this is about me. It's not about you. Why? You're not that important to our lives. If you're really... <laughs> if <laughs> you're really... Mean. If you're really up in your feelings about thinking that we're shading you, we're not shading anyone who listens to the pod or who we care about, so... I'm shading a little bit. Speak for yourself. Okay. Cool. I'm shading a little bit. Some um, shade. But also, we barely talked to anyone at VidCon, so we had a very true. specific group of friends in it. And we it love nice. all of them. That's true. Yeah. It, you know if I love you. I wouldn't be talking shit about You it. also know if she doesn't love you. That's also true. I mean, some days I have my doubts. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay. You know, you know what rocks my world? The bird fact. The bird fact. What's the bird fact? So... Did you know? Ooh, I'm gonna make you guess. I'm gonna make you guess oh, the fact. Oh, I don't want to. Guess what the world record is for the most yolks ever found in a single chicken egg. Guess. Guess what the world record is. Four. Nine. What? What are we... What are we pumping in those poor birds? Were they tiny yolks? I have no idea. There is not a picture. Like average size I once yolks? cracked an egg with two yolks in it. Like, recently. It was super weird. I assume that, like, I realized something recently. And that is that identical twin chickens come from the same, like, shell. Right? Right? Mm-hmm. Right? But I didn't realize that. But, like... I have to be honest, I've never thought about identical twin chickens ever in my life. I'm sure they exist. I'm pretty sure twins what can occur in What had you thinking animals. about this? Because I cracked an egg with two yolks in it, and I was like, man, you know what that means? If those oh. were fertilized, they would have So made... what would the nine be? So twin chickens... <sighs> I don't even know. Wait, how does nine even happen then? Because you can only have, like, an even number from splitting... Whoa. I'm gonna be real. I was gonna, like, get into some science here, 
about the science of having that many yolks in a chicken egg. But I don't... I'm lost as to how this occurred ever. Well, then this isn't a fun bird fact if you basically just told us something and can't explain it. I can't. How reputable is the source of this bird fact? These bird facts... It's a dot co. I don't know. Apparently, somehow, there are nine yolks in a chicken egg. That's if it. anyone can explain this to us, please email us at sincerely queerly. Sorry if I'm pod. spreading fake bird news on the pod. Wait, what's our email? Sincerely queerly pod at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Email us. Explain it to us, science people. Please. I should ask my sister. She'd probably. Oh, yeah. That's a weird show. Mel's sister likes animal facts. Are you texting her? Yeah, we'll see if she answers during the pod. Yeah. Man, just kidding. We are bringing you some hard science on this podcast. Riddle me this, colon. (laughs) (laughs) Can one chicken egg have nine yolks? Yolk? Yolks? Yolks? What a weird word. It doesn't sound right as a plural. Yolks. In it. Apparently, that's the world record. Need your nerdy knowledge for the pod. Like, imagine being, firstly, a chicken. (laughs) Secondly, having to share... A goddamn egg with your brother. Can we talk about my no. favorite quote from my favorite person, Cody? Yeah. Not Cody who works with us on this pod. But... No, but shout out to you, Cody. We love you. You're just not our favorite Cody. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, this Cody is just my favorite person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like, no need um, to be offended by that, anyone, because, you know, it's not like I'm her romantic partner or anything, but I'm not her favorite person. Anyway, I just want to talk about the, that you stole his, like, that joke was just my, intro. That was just my setup for, expli- like, you stole the setup from I, him. Okay. Imagine, first, being a June bug, and secondly, being blind. Apparently, I actually don't know if that's true, but I've just been saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I'm never getting bird facts from you on this podcast. <laughs> well, you're not getting June bug facts, but like, I live in California. There are a lot of June bugs. Those are the the shiny, like, emerald colored bugs that have giant, very loud wings and just kind of fly aimlessly. And I guess it's because whoever told me this, it sounded like it would be true based on my experiences with June bugs. Someone told me they were blind. I don't know if it's true. What I do know is that one time one flew in my hair. Um, and I don't fault that June bug for it. Regardless of its ability to vision. Are we done with our bird facts? I think we are. Whoa. Um, cool. So what did we do this week besides BigCon? We're looking at the same list. We're on to the next bit. <laughs> Can we stop? It was funny, the first pot. What? The bits. Our bits. Our solidified bits. Well, if you would just answer my questions, we wouldn't have to do okay. this. We saw Jurassic World. Fallen Kingdom? No idea why that was an appropriate title, but I think that's what it's called. It's because... Like, the park, Jurassic World, fell, and they revisited it. I guess. It's not like a kingdom. It's not Disneyland. It kind of was, just with dinosaurs. Jurassic Disney World. Um, (laughs) yeah, I guess. I suppose now that you put it that way, it makes sense. God, no. We saw Jurassic World The Fallen Kingdom And it was Bad It was bad, yeah But worth seeing but, somehow. Yeah Bad somehow, but worth seeing Somehow worth review. the joint $13 that we paid to see it Because we had a coupon Oh, you also say coupon I think I, I'm a verse <laughs> I think I switch 
Let us know how you say the word that is officially pronounced coupon, but that I get bullied for saying wait, coupon. Wait, officially? Like, if you, like, type it into Google, it'll say coupon. Okay. And that's also how it's written. There's no Q in it. So I understand that the way that I had been raised to say it was wrong. Well, Q doesn't make the Q sound. Question. Oh. <laughs> quarter. Why is it so hard to think of words that start well, with Q? Quarter is it like the Q Qu- sound. Quarter. No, but like Q. Well, that's C U. E. Yeah, exactly. But that's not how coupon spelled either. I know. But so I'm would... saying you're. We're just none arg- of your logic is working. <sighs> this podcast is tearing us apart. What were we talking? I about? really feel we like we're just in a mood today where we're just like contradicting everything the other person says. Which is hilarious because I'm leaving. Oh in yeah, a couple hours. Mel's leaving. <laughs> but we're just arguing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I think it's because I'm tired. I'm just talking to you. Well, I know. I'm just. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Why are we fighting? We saw Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And it was, like, not good. Here's the thing. The first Jurassic World... No, the first Jurassic Park was amazing. Groundbreaking. <laughs> feminist for, like, 1994 or whatever when it came Wait, out. why is Jurassic Park feminist? Because, like, the women were taken seriously in that movie and, like, not just, like, questioned or, like, had their intelligence be, like, this big plot twist. I'm gonna be and then, real. I don't remember anything from the first Jurassic Park besides, like, the main good dinosaur scenes and the children. Why didn't we watch it before we saw Jurassic World? Because I'm gonna be real. I don't remember what happened in the first Jurassic World because that one wasn't good either. So the thing about Jurassic World 1... Whatever it was called. <laughs> Jurassic Park? No, the first Jurassic uh-huh. World movie. It was just like called Jurassic remake. World, I think. Okay. Well, the first Jurassic World movie. Like, the women were just, like, not taken seriously in it at all. And then, oh, like, yeah. when they said something smart, it was like, whoa. But she's a lady. But she's a lady. Feminism, right? And it was like... It was, it was really it, it came out in, like, what, 2017? 2016? No, when 2016. did that movie come out? Um, and it was, like, still using women being smart and solving problems as, like, the shock value factor in it. Yeah. So I, I was already expecting, like, not a super good movie, because that's why I didn't like the first one. Mm-hmm. And then this one was just bad all around. It exceeded my expectations of being bad. I don't know if it exceeded my expectations of being bad because I I didn't want to leave. No, I mean, you can't... If there is a movie with good CGI dinosaurs in it, nothing will make me leave. Mm -hmm. I love dinosaurs. Here's the thing, like, Tintin? Remember that movie? Animation was fantastic. However, still felt like willed my body to fall asleep because my dad wouldn't let me leave the theater. I have no idea what that is. It's horrible. It's horrible. Can we talk about what kind of kids we were? That's what I'm thinking about now. Hmm? Because I was like, I love dinosaurs. And oh, I'm okay. Like, and like, we've talked about this before, but I think we should just establish on the pod that I was the kind of child who played with Barbies and also dinosaurs and sometimes Wow, there was a- fudge. That's the true footage, uh identity of a child. Mel also loved the Warriors series. No, I didn't. I hated them. <laughs> I just said that to make you upset. I have such negative memories associated with that because all my friends left me out to talk about the books, and I didn't read them because they were bad. Everyone anyway. who liked the Warriors series is a furry now. Yeah. Alienating our furry audience once again. Um, Sorry. Anyway, so sometimes I would play with my Barbies and dinosaurs in one sitting, in one little story time. Wait, can you talk- are you gonna get to the best part about your Barbies, though? I think so. Yeah. Okay. And then we started- I we as in my sister and I, who- 
played together often and usually we're fighting about what we're doing but the only thing we could agree on doing plot wise in our little playtime was making the dinosaurs eat the barbies and invade the huge barbie houses that we had yeah this is very good uh we were like seven and eight and i wanted to murder barbies with my dinosaurs wow can someone say internalized misogyny much can someone say closeted foot lesbian much <laughs> what kind of child were you um besides closeted trans oh well, yeah i mean i don't know but didn't you also sorry what i wanted to get to is that didn't you also string up your barbies and like derobe them or was that someone else Oh, okay. I don't think that was me. Oh, okay. Sorry, I asked if that was you, like, at VidCon, and you implied that it was. I asked if you killed your Barbies, gruesomely, and you were like, yeah. Oh, I meant with the dinosaurs. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I was talking cool. about. Um, My Barbies only died from dinosaur killings. Awesome. What kind of kid were you? <laughs> I was the kind of kid who would, like, sit down to play. I loved Polly Pockets, first of all. I was a slut for Polly Pockets. Me too. Um, and I would sit down to play with my Polly Pockets with my best friend Emma, and we would spend the whole time, um, we had this giant wood wooden house that we would put all our Polly Pocket furniture in. We would literally spend, like, three hours making the house and like really meticulously um really meticulously like focusing on the interior design and making it all pretty and then we would have to leave yep so i don't know i think that's i think so what you're telling us is you're basically bobby from queer eye definitely most definitely <laughs> i wanted to be an interior designer when i was a child i had a solid phase when i was like eight where i exclusively watched hgtv I missed, like, an entire season of Hannah Montana for that. Wow. I know. That's commitment. Right? I don't know. That's so that's what I did. I... I also played a regular game, again, with my best friend, Emma. Um, Your only friend. My only friend. I don't know. I've just known her a while, so most of my, like, childhood, like, playing with someone memories are, like, with her. Because she's still a consistent fixture in my life. I love Emma. She's good. She mm -hmm. has good dogs. She does. Um, yeah, we would we would also have a consistent game where we uh, used our Barbies and pretended that they were famous fashion designers. So what I'm hearing in my head, I'm still thinking about Bobby from Queer Eye, is that we could start our own Queer Eye show and you're Bobby and I do makeup and fashion. I want to be Karamo. And then we can both be Karama. Okay. Can this podcast be, like, Queer Eye? Whoa. I don't know how pod. this would happen. And people okay. ask us for advice I don't know on their life, I... and then we tell them. Okay. And okay. I will send them personalized makeup tutorial videos. I'm trying to think of what else I did as a child. I don't remember. I repressed most of it. I don't re- I really liked Hot Wheels. Hmm. That was, like, my trans thing was, I was, like, I really liked Hot Wheels. But I don't know, I genuinely, like, really enjoyed dolls and, like, the way you're supposed to play with them. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't just kill them with dinosaurs, I also... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I've always, like, gen whoa, time to get deep. <laughs> like, go. gendered children's toys are so much more about, like... They're more of a model for um, ways you'll move through the world socially than necessarily, like, they are in a gendered way, though they are heavily gendered. So, for me, it was, like, other things about my expression as a child were aggressively non-binary, but, like, I've always wanted to be, like, a parent, mm -hmm. and I've always had a good eye for design. So, so I really liked, I don't know, I just, I liked my baby dolls, and I liked being able to meticulously design Polly Pocket houses. 
and that's what, like the person I was. What my gendered toys predicted about me is that one, I was a lesbian, and two, that a I scaly. would no, <laughs> that I would unconditionally love and support dinosaur movies as I grow older, which is what I did and why cool. I saw Jurassic World. Anyway. Cool. I played a lot of Pokemon. That just means you're a nerd. <laughs> yeah. It's valid. Speaking of being a nerd, we can move on to the next Afraid. The ne- next What's topic. the next one? Oh, 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 let's let's jump forward a little bit in Mel's life. So after I stopped killing my Barbies with dinosaurs, she really liked I the, got a Tumblr. She really liked the Hunger Games. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Everyone knows. Well, I, was I just think a Hunger we need Games to recap stand. why you have fans on Tumblr. I don't have fans on Tumblr. You do. They're loyal. Not anymore. No loyal. one talks to me on there. It's barely alive. But when I was 13... I'm a fan of your Tumblr. That's pretty gay, but you're not my biggest fan on Tumblr, so fake. So when I was 13, I made a Hunger Games fan blog. Like you And do. I was probably, like, there were, like, tiers of Tumblr fame within fandoms, and, like, I can tell you who was up top was Brooke Everdeen, who I'm actually kind of friends with. She was, like, the number one, like, famous Hunger Games blogger. Everyone knew who she was. And then there's, like, second tier. That's where you were. And I was, like, a pretty much, like, a second tier Mm -hmm. Hunger Games blog. So I had uh, uh, some thousands of followers on there. um, And I had lots of embarrassing stuff. Ooh, should I talk about the period stories? (laughs) Are we going to talk about my period on this podcast? Basically. You did it. There was a time where I mentioned periods on my blog, and I ended up staying up till 5 a.m. receiving messages, up to 200 messages, of people's first period stories. 200. 200 plus. Which, like, I can't even believe that people have first period stories that are interesting. Mine wasn't interesting. I mean, mine was. I was nine and I started crying because I thought I was going to die. Because I was nine. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) so I'm so salty at my body for giving me a period when I was nine. I'm sorry. So what I'm establishing is that I had a lot of Tumblr followers, which I'm not, like, like, I'm not using that to brag. I'm just, like, setting up context. But she does brag about it. (laughs) super famous um so i have a couple tumblr posts that got really popular and got hundreds of thousands of notes oh she's not kidding when she says hundreds i will tell you how many notes each one has um and we were just laughing at them before we recorded this so we're gonna read some of them and talk about how silly i was um so my (laughs) just plug my thing. My username used to be Sunset Orange Pita. I think I plugged it in a previous pod. Maybe. It's not my... I think it's in our first episode. I should change my URL back to Sunset Orange Pita just to, like, fuck with people. Oh, yeah. I definitely should. Um, so the first one that I'm looking at is from five years ago. I don't know what the date was. And someone sent me an ask. And this was before you could even reblog asks. Like, you had to screenshot it and then post it as a separate post which I did and it was someone who sent me a little story that was like I'll read it to you my crush is deaf it makes me sad when I see people bully him but he's strong and it doesn't get to him he's one of the happiest people I've met a few months ago he signed to me do you like anyone and I smiled and signed back yes but it makes me sad that he's never heard my voice oh I think they even got that wrong It should be that you've never seen my voice because it's still in quotes. He got all serious before signing. I don't need to hear your voice to love you. We've been together ever since. And I was, you know, how old was I? 14? Um, I thought that was super cute because I was a lonely 14-year-old who had never had a relationship. It's probably fake, but it's also, like, kind of sweet. 
so I want to believe it's real. So here's it's here's not. what I wrote in response. I took a gif. Yes, I say gif of Jennifer Lawrence saying "aw" because that's who I was. And I said, that is so fucking cute, I can't even. All in, in all caps. <laughs> um, so I reposted that. And then I started to get hate for this message that an anonymous person sent to me. And they were like, this story is so fake. Oh, my God. And I was like, cool that you think that. Why did you, one, take the time to send this to me and, two, send it to me who has no idea who said it. But then people started accusing me of being the one to write it just to get notes. That's a lot. And I was like, you, you think my writing is this good? Thanks. Anyway. That's a lot. So if you've That's ever... Drama. <laughs> so if you've ever seen that post, that was mine, and I got hate for it. Just want you to know. Okay, cool. My next post... I mean, these aren't in any order. I don't know what's going on. It was also from five years ago. This is when I was really peaking. Oh, yeah. Um... Is, do you want to read this one? Yeah, I do. This one's funny. I love it. I love this post. I'm going to read this in the voice um, that I believe you had internally when you wrote this. Do you ever wonder if anyone has a crush on you and then laugh at yourself because, ew, who would have a crush on you? That's the whole post. Oh, I forgot to tell you how many the last post had. The last one had, like, Around three hundred thousand and Liar. this has Nuh uh <laughs> I want to put up now. <laughs> three hundred thousand or no, three I can't read Please these numbers. Stop yelling. Three hundred twenty two thousand five hundred and ninety two notes. You wanna fact check me? Look up the post. The one that I <laughs> that Ezra just read has two hundred ninety nine thousand eight hundred and thirty five notes. Notes are like notifications, <laughs> right? <laughs> Whoa! I never realized what that was. I was just gonna explain because notes are very much like a Tumblr function. It's, so I was just gonna explain that I that think encompasses has used all the reblogs and likes. Listen, I want to hope that some people are good. I, I don't relate hope... to anyone who didn't grow up on Tumblr. Oof. It's a um, part of God. who I, I like. This is why I'm like this. <laughs> the same, but I, I don't like it. Anyway, next one. Oh, I thought we were gonna drag me for being in a relationship now after I saw all these things. I mean, I think that was implicit, but I had a, I have a crush on you, Mel. You also had a crush on me. Why did you correct yourself? Nah, I just shrugged. Um, I don't know. There's not a lot to say. I think anyone who's listening to this kind of has a pretty good idea of, of how that ended up. But, I mean, I do... I was telling Mel that I think that she needs to update that post with a, like, someone had a crush on me, now we're dating. No, because then I'll get spammed with notifications again. And they'll and say I don't you're lying. Oh, you'll be like, you made this up for attention. <laughs> I don't know. It's sad, though. Yeah, kind maybe I should post. give people hope. You know how, like, there will be some posts that are, like, depressing and then they'll come back like a year later and be like oh this boy really did love me that's a gross example i don't that's find the only one inspiration I can... from those i mean no but i mean i don't either but i'm that's the first thing i thought of where people do that okay. this other post is ooh. this one's boring this is a boring okay post. it was just me screenshotting someone else's answer about how awful tumblr is yeah but it has it has thirty thousand one hundred twenty two notes so clearly one of my she had already peaked Lesser at this point. Posts, yeah. But it's yeah, ridiculous that, like, now. even just you doing that, like, you had enough. Because the person who posted it has way more followers than I do. Just riding the success of others, But no. she didn't post it, and I did. So. Okay. But she did reblog it, I remember that. Okay. And um, the last post we have... Ooh! ...is <laughs> the most annoying one. This is horrible. I have to read it, because I want to feel myself throw up as I say it. <laughs> I want to go to a bookstore and sit there and read and then have a boy walk up to me and comment on the book I'm reading and then he'll sit down with me and talk to me about it and then we'll fall in love and get married and read books together. Like, is that too much to ask? <laughs> this post makes me want it's so to happy. curl into a little bo so ball happy. like one of those pill bugs. And then die. It's so hot, but also so like OMG quirky. OMG, I read in bookstores. <laughs> OMG. 
Is that too much to ask? The funny thing about this, though, is that, like, you don't like reading. Well, I did at this point in my life. But and it's now, hard. I have to, now I have it's to hard explain myself. I love books. I love them to death. I want to write them at some point in my life. I, they give me so much satisfaction. Don't worry, guys. Hate... She's still quirky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I hate the act of reading because I can't focus. Some people just aren't tailored to, like, certain ways of retaining information. For example, and I think we should dedicate a larger chunk of a podcast to this uh, down the road, but I don't listen to podcasts and have very... I have a lot of trouble. Ooh. I have, I have a Spicy. lot of trouble doing it. No, I, I like, can't. Because, um, one, my brain has a very hard time differentiating between voices. Do our voices sound similar to you? Because I feel like they don't. Whoa. But that would be interesting. Let us I'm know. way more annoying than you are. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a lot of trouble uh, with like audio processing and i'm just not very good at it and so unless i'm accustomed to someone's voice or they have drastically different voices and i can't listen to like fictionalized serialized podcasts because i zone out too much basically all i listen to is dear hank and john you know what podcast was good for that what like fictional wise welcome to night because you didn't really need to follow anything you didn't but like it was a very surreal experience when you do zone out. Welcome to Night Vale. Good podcast. That was, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't listen to really anymore, listen to podcasts good. the way that Mel doesn't really read books, but I, like, support them, and now I have one. Yes. That's, That's gonna all. be me when I publish books. Like, I don't really read them, but I have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so that post had 244,000 Six hundred eighty-four notes. Wow, my Tumblr feed sucks right now. I can't read anything. Oh, it. Re- I've told you this. Yeah, I'm too lazy to fix Mel's it. Mel's web theme is bad. Anyway, that's the end of the Tumblr post. Did Elizabeth text you back? <laughs> she did. That's. I got distracted by it earlier, but it's yeah. not a good answer. She said, "Like how twins happen, but with nine. The occurrences of chickens are just like more, though. So theoretically, there would be more chances to have like quintuplets, but nine. But why but aren't why?" Why aren't they an even number? Even. We're texting. I mean, how do triplets happen? Well, you, I, my understanding was always that you can't have identical triplets because yeah, you did tell that to me the other day. So you better be right because cells divide in twos. Well, maybe they're not identical. But how? I mean, I guess. No, but that doesn't make any freaking sense. Because with triplets, you have, you'll have you either have three eggs get released and fertilized instead of one, or two eggs get released and fertilized, and then one of them splits off, and you'll have two identical twins, and then a third triplet. That was always my understanding. It's been a long time since I took a biology class. Maybe I don't know things, but that was always my understanding. Someone please tell us how this works. And if two eggs get released and fertilized, then I would think that they would have, like, two shells as well and that having multiple yolks in a shell only occurs because that yolk like split too early and then well maybe it split too early way bunch of times well yeah but how would how would you get an uneven number well you have two and this one splits and then you have three and then this one splits and you have four, and this one splits and you have five. I suppose. I suppose my logic is flawed here. I'm not very good at science or math. Mood. I can't anyway. count. I'm gay. Uh, did we ever talk about Jurassic World? We did. Beyond. It was fine. Bad. What do you want to talk um, about? I don't know. Like, Jurassic World was really weird. The cinematography was very good. Uh, at very odd times felt like four different movies but those cgi dinosaurs man sexy stop there's some sexy cgi dinosaurs oh they were just cute i'm trying to include our furry audience stop you're only including scalies so don't even pretend i'm trying to include i'm trying to make the scalies feel at home in our podcast I just wish you wouldn't call. I just want to be fictional. Inc- I just want to be inclusive. <laughs> God, Mel, we get it. 
We get it. You're exclusionary and gatekeeping, and you don't want furries <laughs> to listen to the podcast. We they get it. They can listen. I just don't like it when you call me lizard sexy. <laughs> you specifically. <laughs> as my partner. Why don't you love me? <laughs> anyway, let's talk about good real animals. Blue would never do this to me is all I'm saying. Blue would eat your face. Good. Sexy. <laughs> can we talk about a good pure animal without corrupting the conversation? Okay. Sweetie. Sweetie! So, we have a fun little story for you here on, on this pod. We first, our first spotting of Sweetie, who is a cat, occurred a couple months ago on a crisp spring night. Uh, there was a cat... There's an outdoor cat um, in my backyard, and we have this glass door that faces out to the backyard, and my cat, Fila, is exclusively an indoor cat because, one, she's a fucking wuss, and two, even if she wasn't, there are many coyotes where I live, and they will eat your cats. So, like, if you live in the San Fernando Valley and you have an outdoor cat, what you doing? So... On this particular evening, uh, this cat decided to say hello to our backyard. She jumped over the fence, and we found her looking through the glass door at my cat, Fila, who also had her nose pressed against this glass door. So we have, like, this, like, little kitty staring contest happening. And Fila, my cat, is just, like all her hair is standing up and she was just growling and this cat was so goddamn unbothered by it she was like yeah uh uh-huh sweetie she's seen some shit she's seen some shit meanwhile my cat has not um so we decided that she was Fila's girlfriend and we saw her around a couple times she was this big big Maine Coon she had giant paws and a big old head fluffy tail fluffy tail the fluffiest um and then we didn't see her for a bit sometimes we would like spot her around the neighborhood but recently more and more we started to see this cat like a month ago like when i first got here we saw her like climbing over your fence yeah and we tried to say hi to her but she kind of like ran away but she was definitely like we always thought that she wasn't belonged to someone because she was not feral she was friendly enough with humans Mm -hmm. where she would like come over but she was just a bit skittish because once again as we said she has seen some shit so we saw her at the beginning of june and now it's the end of june Ooh, I just exposed when recording this podcast. We're pre-recording a lot of episodes while Mel's with me, so that's that. I exposed it. That's fine. Yeah. Anyway, we saw her again recently, and this once really big cat was, like, so skinny. And Maine Coons are big cats, and she was just, like, skin and bone, um... And this time, we are actually able to get her to, like, trust us enough to get some good old head scratches in. And we brought out a bag of treats. And we ended up calling over another family who lives in my neighborhood who were walking their dog together. And I just was like, hey, like, does this cat actually belong to anyone? Because for the first time, since she was so skinny, I realized that she might not actually be anyone's cat. And they said, well thing is we heard that this family a few doors down from us has we learned that this family a few doors down from us had a cat but they're moving and they also got a new puppy and they've moved all this new furniture into their house because they want to they're like trying to sell their house so they're trying to make it look better and basically they once had this indoor outdoor cat who was really plump and everyone in the neighborhood knew her And they've essentially, like, kicked the cat out where they're not letting her inside anymore. And that just, like, absolutely breaks my heart. Like, it it makes me mad even saying that because, like, what? But we're not sure that that's who the cat is. We're not positive. The more people who came by, though, because, I mean, 
we're just feeding a cat on the sidewalk and I live in kind of like a quiet neighborhood where I'm like pretty well acquainted with most of my neighbors so more and more people seem to like confirm that story a bit but in that case sweetie's not a girl Sweetie's sweetie would be milo and the boy he would be a boy however gender's fake and she's feel's girlfriend <laughs> and she's feel's girlfriend um so we also we should we also named her sweetie because she's a sweetie and i kept we like we didn't know her name or anything so i just kept going sweetie sweetie and it stuck um, she was so cute. She I got she really like got friendly with us and she was letting us pet her and like rubbing her head against my hand, which like cats usually don't like me that much because they can tell I'm a dog person. And then I got her to climb in my lap. Yeah. She was really happy her. about our treats too. Like she had not had a lot of food. Um and we couldn't take her inside. Uh, my parents were very, very firm in saying like you can't take this random cat into our house, but she definitely didn't belong to anyone. Um, and we're not really sure what to do. I think that if I see her around again, I'm going to probably try to, like, keep her somewhere and see if I can get her to, like, a shelter or something. But it was so late at night, and we were just kind of trying to, like, scramble to keep her there and, like, make sure she was feeling safe. Um, and also trying to see if we could let her in my house, but we couldn't. Um, because, as I mentioned, I have a cat of my own, and she would not be super into that. Yeah. Uh, but cats, pets are a big responsibility. Like, can I just use this pod to say that? If you're gonna get an animal, you should damn well, like, be ready to take care of it through everything. Because cats, cats live a long time. Cats aren't a joke. People think that they're, like, like, yeah, they're easier to take care of than dogs, but, like, they require just as much, like, love and patience and it just, like, it makes me so upset. Like, I was literally, like, crying about this last night. Like, I don't understand how anyone could do that. Mm -mm. Anyway, right. we love her. We made a friend. Sweetie. Sweetie's our new best friend. And honestly, if I keep seeing her, uh, I'm gonna continue to update this pod on. I'm sad that I'm her leaving behavior. tonight because I can't see her again. Yeah. <sighs> Moment mm -hmm. of silence for Sweetie. Yeah. We just love her. Sweetie, if you're listening to the pod, please, please come to us. We love you. <laughs> yeah. Hope you're having a lovely and gay day. Sincerely Queerly is a production of Earbud Media. Our Twitter is squeerlypod. Our Instagram is sincerelyqueerly. And you can email us at sincerelyqueerlypod at gmail.com. Sincerely, Sincerely Ezra. Not making it in. <laughs>